Welcome, Saskatchewan! We are at the same time as you now in the world. The center of the world is now Saskatchewan and Manitoba. We have the same time and season. And we need to stay there. What do you say, Saskatchewan? Well, they already stay put. It's Manitoba that has to get it right. Oh, oh we got to get it right. That's ah, well, we spent last week in Saskatchewan in Regina, and it, it was a great time. Mm-hmm. You dressed up like a little igloo or utpik or Eskimo. <laughs> we went to a football game in the middle of a blizzard. And well, it was definitely snowy and quite chilly, yep. How did you handle that, honey? In the middle of a storm. <laughs> <laughs> you go through. You go through. You don't give up. Is that right? Keep well, on we going. got pictures. How, 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 if you're going to go through a storm. But with a little help from my friends. Ah, but the thing is, you prepared yourself for the storm. Like I said, with a little help from our friends. They had nice warm lap blankets, seats to sit on, these metal seats so that, you know, Every you know, every little bit was Gary and after. Karen prepared, and yep. and we had lots of clothing, and we had hot tea. Yes, and we celebrated when everybody, wh- whoever scored a touchdown, or we had to celebrate because the more you clap, the better you stay warm. So everybody was celebrating something in the middle of the storm. That's what you need to do in the middle of the storm. Move to Saskatchewan. <laughs> and then you come back to Manitoba where it settles <laughs> and, and down. You just celebrate all the time, and your time never changes, and you're in the right season all the time. Sure. So we need to stay in this time. And if we're in step and in season with the Lord, then we won't miss anybody's time. I bet you never thought I was going to open that way, did you, honey? You know what? You're always full of surprises. I, I like to be creative. You do. And anticipation is a good thing, right? <laughs> Do I ever anticipate? I don't have to. Yeah. I know. <laughs> this ah. I can expect. This I can expect. Okay. Well, this month, you know, November the 5th to December the 5th, you know, at one time, you, you know, we're going into uh, January next year. It'll be uh, 30 years, okay, of being a federally registered charity, you know, when it was activated. But we've been ministering before then. You know, it's probably 34 years. It'll be 34 years that the Lord act, actually gave us prophetically the name Resurrection Life yeah. and set the foundation and then the mission statement and everything else. But we were ministering before that. It just says cu- a couple. You, you were, you know, you were the president of Women's Aglow and I was the president of Full Gospel Listening. We were active in our church. Uh, we're active in, our, in everything in our community. Community, community, community and also in other churches, because uh, they said we had a deliverance ministry. (laughs) They said. They said. All the other churches said we had a deliverance ministry, and we said, no, we don't have a deliverance ministry. We have a Jesus encounter of the best kind. People come into his presence, and they get delivered. We just happened to stand there in the authority of who we are. We didn't know what apostolic authority was then. But we did know our authority, and the demons knew the authority, the sicknesses knew the authority, and we just cast them out. And sometimes we didn't have to say a thing uh, because of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And And we're coming into that season. We're coming into that season. The demons know exactly who has the authority. Whether you have it on your, how could I say, whether you're saying it or understanding it, but you may be walking in whatever denomination, but you have a strong authority because of who you are as a son and daughter of the Most High because it's all about kingdom. The kingdom of heaven coming onto earth. And that's what it is about now. Mm -hmm. This is the season of kingdom. This is the season of reigning in the kingdom of God here on earth. This is our time. This is our season. And I want you to know we're going to be all like Saskatchewan. We're not going to change the time. God has set the time. He has put the plumb line there, and that's the way it is. Yes, Manitoba is the keystone province, but I want you to know Saskatchewan is the supporter underneath that, on, on the one side and Ontario the other side. It is holding up the keystone. You get that? We, can, we cannot do this for, as a dominion in Canada by one province. A dominion is each one of the living 
stones or provinces that God selected in Canada from, the, from dominion to dominions, from sea to sea. That's including the north. So don't get confused about politics and different, <clears throat> different provinces and different leaders saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to change this, we're going to change that. God has not changed from the beginning of time. And he placed us here for this time, here in Canada, to be his presence here in authority, or wherever you are around the world. <coughs> I'm sorry. I needed to bring my water up. Can you get my water, dear? I'm getting excited. Well, while we're waiting for that, I'll just draw your attention to something that occurred to me as you were speaking about having been uh, 30 years in ministry. 30 is significant, uh, especially in the Jewish culture of Jesus' time. You had to be 30 years of age before you could be a rabbi, mm -hmm. before you could serve on the Sanhedrin, and be Jesus waited until he was 30 years of age mm. before he started his ministry. That's a good point. So we are coming right up on the anniversary of becoming 30 years and coming into the fullness of everything that God intended. And thank Good you. word. That's that, a good word. That's part of where I'm going on this. So the Lord prepared us prior to the 30 years, you know, like as far as being... Uh, children growing into maturity. We all have to start somewhere as a child of, of God, but we have to grow into the maturity to be that man and woman or that... Uh, um, I just want to... just uh, uh, That breaker anointing that God can trust. I can, if I can trust you with a little, I can trust you with a lot. And if I'm going to give you my breaker anointing, if I'm going to give you all authority, I need to know that you're not still in diapers Amen. and pampers. I need to know that you are in a place of obedience, not doing your own thing. Right now, uh, there are too many people who are not in obedience, and they feel that because of whatever their situation is, that they can tell God what to do. And no, no, you need to be obedient. In Acts 16, which is part of the month of Shazvan, this Okay, when um, Paul was going to go into Asia, he goes to Asia, stands on the border, and but while standing on the border, he wants to go and bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into Asia. And what does the Holy Spirit say? No. Do you think God was testing him in the dream? Do you think God was testing him in his obedience? He could have blessed his ministry going into Asia, but would it have been significant? Would it would have been in the divine purpose of God because, Je because the Father in heaven, Jesus, wanted Paul to go into Philippi. Because Philippi was going to be the gateway of bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ right from the eastern side of Europe in that area right to us now. It was his decision to bring the gospel this way now. That's why it's important to be obedient. God will test you. He will bless you in anything that you serve God with. But will it be a divine purpose of blessing here at Resurrection Life? We've had to listen which way to go. A lot of times you just say, okay, you're going, to, you're going to Jamaica now, and now you're going to Cuba. It was pretty easy to figure it out. We just, we just followed but then other things happened where we had to make, and we were tested, and we continue to be tested, to make right decisions by being obedient. Most of you don't like to hear that. Amen. Obedience before sacrifice, as it says in 1 Samuel 15, verse 20 to 22. Obedience before sacrifice. You are not to sacrifice yourself in ministry. You are to be obedient to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It's all about being to Him. Amen. It's all about Him. Not your ministry and being sacrificed. Whatever that is, it's to Him first. Amen. So that's the time I'm talking about. 
right now. It's important for us to be obedient to him, listen to him. This is the time of listening and season. Mm -hmm. God's voice speaks. Okay, we've had our second conference, God's voice speaks. Everything in the Hebrew, when you do the teaching about God's voice speak, I never, I haven't spoken about this. I'm going to speak about it in two weeks. I've been waiting for the right time. It's all about God's voice speaking to those who will come into the place of obedience to hear his word. And I'm not, we are not going to change what our conference is in the fall, in the Feast of Tabernacles. It's all about God's voice speaking. We're not going to jump from here to there to there. <clears throat> it's about God's voice speaking. It's about God's voice speaking and us being obedient. And the, excite, uh, the excitement of it this time is that we've seen the presence of God come in and fill this place. And it's going to continue to do that as long as we are obedient to him. So, are we going to be tested? Yes, we're going to be tested. And in, the, in our testing, we, we will come to a place of greater trust with one another, corporately, but with the Lord. We will come into a greater place of walking in faith of our King of Kings, the Lord, not the fear of man. And we're going to come into a better place of hearing his voice in worship. Just as Paul did in Acts, Acts 16. He was tested. And he obeyed. He went, he went to Philippi. I'll teach. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for a couple of weeks because uh, Christopher is preaching this week. Brock next week, and then three weeks I'll be preaching on it. So if you want to be, you want to hear this, three weeks. If not, it'll be on YouTube. But until there, until now, we need to be obedient. Amen. The Father in heaven has tested His beloved children from the start. We have been tested from the start. Amen. We have been tempted by the devil from the start. Temptation will still be there. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Jesus was tempted after he was baptized. The greatest temptation came when his ministry started. Based on what Pastor Ralph just talked about. Temptation is going to come, but we need to be strong in our obedience and our faith and our trust in God. And the promises of God on our life. And I, I am so excited that, yes, we're going into our 30th year. Now, if we believe in what is happening in Israel, we are in our 30th year because they believe conception is at the time of when you start counting the birth, birth dates, not when you're born. We were conceived, so we're in our 30th year. <laughs> another time so God's voice speaks God tests us to strengthen us God tests us to encourage us so that we know that we hear his voice so our faith can be increased God's storms are his mercies in disguise for that he would come into a better place in covenant relationship with you because you are coming into the place and say, I surrender to you, Lord, through this test. What is the next thing you would have me do? And if it's the devil coming, you can have the discernment to say to that temptation, be gone from here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because you have all authority. From the beginning. So are you in a child of maturity that does not know the difference between temptation and pampers? Or testing, being clothed in the righteousness and the glory of who we are, sons and daughters of the Most High. <sighs> so who is testing whom? The question today, who is testing whom? The next question is, will you trust me, says the Lord thy God? I'm going to, that's, okay. I've had. <laughs>
You done good, dear. You done good. Did I? Yeah, you did. Can you just grab me on the back here? And just check? <laughs> good okay. morning. Morning. Okay. No, I'm good. Right. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Just okay. Okay. there you go. All right. Thanks. There. there. Um, that's yes, that's a good one. <laughs> we love being close together, especially at the football game. Mm -hmm. Nice and warm. You know, um, speaking of testing and all the all the various different years and and you know going through things, um, have we made our mistakes like anybody else along the way? You bet. But praise God for good people around us. Oh. Praise God for a, a Lord who is very mm. forgiving and a God who redeems. The Lord has say, yes. The Lord has always placed around us wonderful, matured. Strong Christians on our board, and elders in our church, and right here amongst us, right friends now, friends around. So, yes, yeah. but that's the, that is the community that is important. In yeah. this. and the ecclesia. One the for ecclesia. Another. Yes, even though yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I'm going to borrow. This is a a declaration, a prayer. I'm borrowing this from Brenda Nash, one of our hmm. own in Manitoba. Yeah. Um, and she has uh, written a book of decrees and declarations. Yes. And Just north of Winnipeg. Toulon, yes. Toulon, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so timely right oh. now, so oh. timely. But I'm going to just, we're okay. going to speak this, and then we'll go into the worship. And we say, Heavenly Father, you alone are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I desire, we fully desire, to surrender to you and I lay my life down before you. Above all, I pursue you. By faith, I decree and declare that I am and we are fully surrendered to you, God, and we walk by faith and not by sight because nothing is impossible with you. Mm -hmm. All things are possible to me, to us, because we believe. I thank you, Lord, that... My mouth, our mouths are filled mm -hmm. with the substance of heaven. I have precision, precision, accuracy in prophetic words and in words of hope, words of truth, mm -hmm. words of wisdom, words of knowledge, words of exhortation, encouragement, and comfort. I declare that I am and we are seeing people healed, delivered, mm -hmm. and set free mm -hmm. by the governing words of Jesus because the word is demonstrated by power and not words only. I thank you, God, that Christ in me, in us, is the hope of glory to the world around us. I decree and declare that as I walk and as we walk, I am shifting atmospheres, communities, and territories, and bringing the kingdom of God wherever I tread my feet. My life is affecting change in the lives of others, and delivering Holy Spirit impact, where signs, wonders, and miracles follow me and follow us wherever we go. Amen. As the hope of glory resides in me, I emanate light, lo life, and love to the world around me. We praise you, God, that you are continually shifting my mindset and transforming my belief system to align with your word and what you are doing now in this season. I trust in you, Lord God, and I lean not on my own understanding, but in all of my ways, acknowledge you and you will direct our steps. Today, my Lord and my God, I surrender my eyes, my ears, my nose and mouth to align with your eyes and what you see your ears and what you hear, your nose and what you smell, your mouth and what you are speaking. I surrender my hands, feet, and body, Lord, to your purposes. Use them for your glory. I surrender my time, my day, my will, and my agenda, and I align them all with your time, your day, and your agenda. <laughs> Align, align <clears throat> pardon me, my timeline under the governance of heaven and let your will be done. Teach me, teach us, Lord, how to lay down 
our earthly life and surrender to the seamless union of Christ in me and in us. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. All right. So as we go into worship, yeah. as we make the de declaration for this month from the 5th of November, November to the 5th of December, this is the month of Shalom. This is the month of uh, missions. This is the month of benevolence. And when I say that, for all the, you that are giving your tithes and your offering here, bless you for that. Bless you. And this is just a... And, and another offering, if you put it in for uh, missions, let us know. We'll direct it. To, there's, there's lots of needs. And if it's for benevolence, locally, the food bank here in Carberry needs help, just like food banks everywhere. We can do that because we've, we've had four street churches. So we know, how, we know what it means about feeding the hungry. We're just blessed here in Carberry. But there are people in Carberry, and there's a food bank here that needs help. And we're going to help it and others. So... So it's up to you to come to the place and say, I, 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 so many of you are such great givers, and we thank you for that. And, and the other thing is that, yes, we're in, our, we're, going, we're in our 30th and going into our 30th year of being a federally registered charity. But we've been operating in ministry before that. It took the paperwork. The paperwork started 30 years ago. So those who came into the vineyard with us from the very beginning, like a Ken Gretter, like Jim and Elaine Smart, like Bill and Poole, uh, Bill Yolanda. and Yolanda Poole. Like they're still friends, big friends with us. And they, they were on our original board. And they were worshipers too. But those who have come into the vineyard right now, it says in the word of God, you share equally. That's right. From the beginning until now, until we continue. In Saskatchewan time forever. <laughs> Saskatchewan never changes and we're not going to change. Hallelujah. Is that a prophetic word? Anyway, well, it's a ray anyway, word. Anyway, so I just it, want you to know. It's a ray word. It's a ray word. <laughs> so bless you. We're in the vineyard. We're in the kingdom of God, and God is saying, let's work in the vineyard. Regardless if you've been part of this ministry from the very beginning, and there are many that still are, and there are many that are just coming in, and more to come. Your wages are all the same in heaven, and it's written down because it says you're giving unto the Lord, not this ministry. Okay. And this month, we're going to, like we did before, Benevolence is a big thing, but also missions. We've got so much going on, which is good and exciting. Much to be praying for. And what's happening here is great and exciting. And we give God all the glory. Mm -hmm. So let's worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
way we always think of people that is about our Father's business. May we, may we be a people to spend time with our Father.
presence, his very essence.
stay hooked up and we'll hook this up. Coming and introduce this young man. Thank you, oh thank goodness. you, thank you, Bruce and Cheryl. Oh my goodness! And the, the phantom sweetness. percussion player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit, Lord, that you just come. You've just come, mm. and you've you've tabernacled with us right here, Lord. Mm that you do and, and, and you were waiting for us to come, for us to show up. Hmm. And Lord, you have met us in such a sweet, sweet way. Yeah. Your presence, and it's true, the essence yeah. of who you are. Amen. And Lord, we just want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you, Abba, Amen. for the sweet spirit, sweet, sweet spirit of yeah. Jesus. The sweet presence of Holy Spirit and our King, our King who's very comfortable here in the room with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So. It's been an amazing ten days. When, I, when we look at the five days we had in Saskatchewan, with our friends Gary and Carolyn, mm -hmm. who pampered us, I didn't know there was a hot springs in Mon Moose Jaw. I think most Saskatchewan people. I know didn't know this. in Watrous they have a hot springs. Saskatchewan no. is no. hot. In two the... thumbs up. There's two hot springs. You can't go through the prairies now and not knowing that there is a hot springs in the plains. You can find them in the mountains. But how wonderful it is to find a hot spring in the plains. And how much more wonderful when we went on the wagon tour that I got the revelation and the epiphany based on Larry Robinson saying, you know, down there in the punch bowl, we're going to call that Angel's Punch Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't freeze over here in the Carberry Sand Hills because there is a bubble, 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 trouble, trouble for the devil. There's a bubble, 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 trouble for the devil, bubble, bubble. It's a bubbling up and has from the beginning of time and creation in the Carberry Sand. <laughs> I'll just go sit down. <laughs> You're supposed to go boom, 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 boom. We're rapping right now. Yeah. One of us might be. And I'm going to wrap that up. <laughs> <laughs> and well, we want to welcome Christopher. I'm just saying Pastor. he's trouble for the devil then. That's right, he is. Pastor, bishop, apostle, man of God. From Mostly a man, servant of God, who comes and he is about the Father's business. And so we want to welcome Christopher to share what God has put on his heart for each and every one of us today. And we want to bless this man of God. We want to bless him. Yeah. And we welcome you. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up here because Africa is right there. Okay. And Malawi is very close to the equator. Right there. They don't know what snow is. He hasn't done snow angels yet, but it will happen. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. You know, it's, it's uh, wonderful to have you part of the ministry for now 2016. Uh, I don't know how many churches you had when you started, but I know you got 17 now. Living Word, right? Love Word. What, love Word. Yeah. It's living too. Love, yeah, sure. love word church. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Let's have some love word. Amen. And some Amen. living word. Amen. And fire word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> praise be to God. Bless you. Christ. That's good. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much for the wonderful worship. It was a very, very wonderful experience. Yeah, I started seeing some visions. Yeah, may God bless you so much for that wonderful uh, 
uh, presence of God. I mean, worship. Yeah, thank you so much for the first exhortation that Daddy and Mama Le, you gave us in the morning. You said the most important thing in, to us as the, our children of God is obedience, to obey the voice of God. That is the number one thing. And God says in his ways to say he uh, requires obedience and not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Obedience is something that is in the heartbeat of God. Yeah. Yeah, uh, God does not want to reason with us. He only wants us to follow yeah. whatever he says. He doesn't need our, our second thought. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't need our second thought. Yeah. Yeah. He simply needs us to follow uh, his guidance. Yeah. So I thank God uh, for the uh, morning exhortation. It's just in line with what God has given me to share this morning. I uh, I think God is not God of confusion. I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't think, but yeah. we know that God is not God of confusion. That is his nature. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, he does not speak one thing and tomorrow the other thing. He's just very consistent in his uh, voice. So the very same voice that we held in the morning, God is continuing to uh, speak to us. I think there is something. You know, I'm, I'm very much, uh, it touches me so much when uh, today I hear the same voice, tomorrow I hear the same voice. I always sit down and say, there is something that God is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, when God was speaking to us this morning, and he, this is the word that God gave me, Throughout the week, I've been uh, leading, I've been meditating, I've been uh, uh, searching scriptures about it. So, and again, I saw Daddy saying the same thing. I said, praise God, there's something that God wants. Whenever God wants to do something, he always prepares his children. Yeah. He always prepares his children, and he says, be prepared, because I'm coming in your midst. Hallelujah. So before I open the scriptures, I just want to pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We bless you, Father, because of this uh, special day that you have given us, O oh Lord. The day, Father, filled with your blessing. For every word that comes from you, Father, to us is a blessing. Whether it is a rebuke, whether it is, Father, Lord, a, co a correction, whether it is the, pronoun of pro the, the, the declaration of your blessings, it is a blessing, Father. Every word that comes through your mouth. Father, as Jesus said, man shall not live on blood only, but with all every word that comes through your mouth father your word is our food and your word is our life and we cannot live without your word oh lord yeah. father in the name of jesus christ i pray for each one of us in this room lord father you have prepared your people to come and hear your word yeah. i pray abba father that your word will be fruitful father in the life of each one of us this yeah. morning in the name of jesus christ father i thank you i bless you and i honor you in jesus name father we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, today I want to uh, share or to speak um, the secret of walking with God. Mm. The secret of walking with God. You know, the desire of God is to uh, walk with us and we as his children, we need to walk with God. We need to walk with God. Um, it is like a common thought that every child of God walks with, with God, but that is not true. There are very few people that walk with God. Those that walk with God, they are successful in their everyday life. Whatever comes in their lives, whether it is good or bad, but there is true more, come through successfully those who walk with God. Yeah. Something bad can happen today, but that's not the end of their life. Yeah. God, because they are walking with God, God allowed that thing to happen. So whoever walks with God, he is successful. He is successful. Uh, I do not want to describe or mean to go further in uh, explaining the word successful, because the understanding of people maybe say, 
uh, why is it that such kind of things is happening to me, yet I walk with God? You know, in the Bible, throughout the Bible, there's nobody who has ever walked with God and he walked in a highway. I would put it in that way. And he walked in a highway. So many things happened. We hear Abraham at, at one time, he had even to tell a lie. We hear Joseph, a man who fought and he never lost any battle. But so many things, bad things happened upon his life. But he walked closely with God and he was successful. And God decided at his own time to take him. So I'm saying everyone who walks with God, his life is very successful. In the eyes of God, not in the description of the world, yeah. but in the eyes of God. So my point this morning, uh, what I want to emphasize more is that it is not every believer who says, maybe I'm a born again, that walks with God. Very, very few people that walk with God. Very, very few people. So we are going to see the secret of walking with God. Turn with me, Bibles, from Genesis chapter 5, verse 20. We begin from verse should be 23, Genesis. Twenty-three and twenty. Let's begin from verse maybe uh, from verse twenty-one up to. Up to twenty-four, from twenty-one up to twenty-four, Genesis chapter five from twenty-one up to twenty-four. Uh, my living translation, New Living Translation, I'm reading from New Living Translation. The Bible says, when Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Metoshera. After the birth of Metoshera, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. And he had other sons and daughters Enoch lived. 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. Yeah, here is a man, the Bible is narrating his story in very uh, few sentences. But you discover that he, the Bible says he lived 365 days since uh, his birth. He walked with God. The Bible, the New Living Translation say. He had that close fellowship with God. But you know, there's something that we need to understand from this as we are reading from the uh, Old Testament. During this time, there was no written word of God that Enoch was referring to every day of his life. There was no written word of God. The written word of God came during the time of uh, Moses. So, so many people before uh, the word came into, I mean, into physical as we are handling it today. So many people walked successfully with God. But to our surprise, these people, they never had the written word. But then, how did they build uh, that fellowship, close fellowship with God? How possible did they walk with God? So these people, Enoch himself, depended on the voice of God. Only the voice of God. He depended on the voice of God. You know, when we read from uh, uh, John chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning there was a word. And this word was a voice. It was not a word as we hear it today in our Bibles. But it was simply a voice. So Enoch... Enoch positioned himself in his life to hear something about his life from God. Enoch positioned himself 
if he wanted to do something in, in his life, if he had to take any decision in his life, he depended on the voice of God always. So he valued, in other ways I would say, he valued the voice of God more than anything else in his life. He valued the voice of God. So number one, uh, this voice of God in the first place was very invisible. It was invisible. When we hear it in Genesis chapter 1, we hear that a man was able to hear when God was approaching him. Yeah. This is what the Bible says. Because the Bible says when God was approaching Adam and Adam held God was coming, the Bible says he hid. He went into hiding. That means a man was very much sensitive to the coming or to the voice or to the presence of God in the first place. So this is how uh, Enoch uh, positioned himself to hear in hearing the voice of God. So the, I'm saying the voice of God was so special in this life of a particular person and from this voice that he, he made it very special in his life, he built a close relationship with God, and it pleased God simply to take him. He did not test the, 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 the soil as we test nowadays. He never tested the soil. But the Bible says God took him into heaven, for no man witnessed his burial. Nobody witnessed his burial. Now, the number one thing that... Uh, uh, the Bible says here, it says, in, I've liked a new living translation, it says, he, he walked in close fellowship with God. In close fellowship with God. There's this thing that most of us as believers, we fail to build with God. And though we say we are, born, we are believers, we believe in the word of God, but we have not reached that level of building a close relationship with God such that we hear him speaking. You know, when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, he says, my sheep hears my voice. My sheep hears my voice. So whoever is a believer, you know, when, when we go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, the Bible says the spirit of a man is the lamp of the spirit of God. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the spirit of God. So the Bible says, if there is no spirit, or if somebody doesn't have the spirit in himself, therefore the spirit of God cannot find a place to reside in that particular person. That particular person cannot be led by God. He cannot hear the voice of God. Because there is no place inside of himself where the Spirit of God can reside or can rest and begin to direct him. That's good. So, now, these people, we are very much at a very advantaged position nowadays very much now we have the word of god that's the number one thing we have the word of god written even if i'm if i feel so much but maybe i feel like i cannot uh, hear or i cannot hear god but when i go into the scriptures and i begin to read i see god speaking to me i see god rebuking my everyday life i see god directing me this written word but our friends in this time during the time of uh, Noah, they never had a word that they could go and begin to read. But now we have that, ad we are at a very advanced, I mean, a good position that we have no excuse. Surely, hear me, we have no excuse today to say we are failing to walk with God. No right. excuse. There are two important things that God has made it very possible for us to walk with him in that close relationship. Two important things in that close relationship. The number one thing he has given us is the word. And the number two thing he has given us is the spirit. And today I, walk, I will talk much more on the spirit. I will talk much more on the spirit. Now, these people during this time, they never had the spirit, so to say. But God was simply visiting them. 
he could visit them and speak Noah today. I want you to do A, B, C, D. And then the most important thing, Noah couldn't explain, couldn't give any excuses. When we hear Moses, it was the same when God descended on Abraham and he asked Abraham to give him his own son as a sacrifice. You know, Abraham never went to the woman and said, my wife, God has said, has said this to me. No, he never wanted a thought of a woman. But the Bible says, when the morning came, he simply took his son and they went for that sacrifice. That is the kind of the obedience God is expecting us to do. We, each time we hear the word of God. So now, this was what it was with Noah, I mean with Enoch himself. He never had a, th a second thought. When the word of God comes, you know, uh, it reminds me when the mother of Jesus was speaking during the first miracle of Jesus Christ, the wedding. When the mother was speaking to the, to the people on the wedding, he says, when they reported it to, he, to, he, to her to say, you know what, we have learned out of... Uh, a wine, a special drink. There's no special drink. Everything has gone. And, and the mother said, you go to that man and whatever he tells you, do it. Right. Never have, you shouldn't have any second thought. Now, in our walking with God, God does not, uh, I mean, ask us, what are we thinking about that, what he's saying? No. He doesn't ask us, what are you thinking about this? No. Right. That That's is not right. with God. God is, is like, God is simply telling you, he has seen what is coming ahead of you. And he is telling you today, take this direction. So you do not have to say no, because you have not seen what is coming ahead of you. Him has gone ahead of you, and this is the reason he's telling you the other direction. Even if you were enjoying in this direction, but because what is coming ahead, you don't know, but God has seen it. He is telling you to, to make a diversion. So in the work of God, expect so many diversions in your life. Because you do not see what is coming ahead. God is seeing what is coming ahead. This is the reason God is giving you, is telling you the diversion. He said, would you please apply your blacks. Now turn to your left. Because they are seeing what is coming ahead of you. So you do not have to say, but I'm enjoying, I'm driving safely. No, my, my friend, he has better plans. This is the reason he's telling you a different direction. So I'm saying we have got a, we are at a very uh, uh, a good position that we do not have, I mean, uh, excuses in the working with God. Now, in, to be successful to work with God, the number one thing I've said is building a close relationship with God. Building a close relationship with God. And you know, uh, Pastor Love was teaching uh, yesterday, if we saw it, he was talking the very same kind that what God desires or what God expects us is a relationship, a close relationship with him. God is not, is, is, uh, God is not happy to speak to, uh, to animals, to fish, right. to, to, to cow, to donkeys or whatever. God is, wants to speak to us. This And we're in our creation, he created us in a very special way because he has got a very special assignment with us. So this is the reason God is seeking our close relationship. This is the reason God had to sacrifice just to bring us back to him so that he continues with his assignment on earth. He is seeking your close relationship. You know, in the walking with God, uh, let me know, uh, in the walking with God, uh, David says a lot of things. He says, early in the morning, I seek you, Lord. My soul pants for you. He is seeking that close relationship. He says he, he was not happy that a moment passing without hearing the voice of God. It requires God has made that relationship possible with you. And it again takes you another step to come close to God. He says, those who seek me, and, he, and I like the Hebrews, he says, those who seek God diligently, 
are diligent, those who seek him, not those that they look like they are seeking God, but there's that level I always say, those who seek him diligently, those who have placed their mind on God, those that have put their energy on God, those that they think about God every moment of their time, they will find him he is available. So that's the number one. It says, build your relationship with God. Le your relationship must be conspicuous. It shouldn't be a hiding relationship. It has to be conspicuous. Everybody has to notice it. You don't have to be, uh, I mean, to be ashamed of that one. Jesus, uh, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of preaching. I'm not ashamed of identifying myself with Christ Jesus. Even if he's a man who was rejected, but I identify myself with him. So I'm not ashamed. So your relationship with God, it shouldn't be a seasonal one. It shouldn't be something that is not conspicuous to other people. It has to be evident everybody must see it that you have that close relationship with God so this is what happened with Noah that's why it I mean with Enoch sorry that's why it pleased the God to take him you know I'm, I'm trying to understand I say if it was possible with on Enoch it is possible with everybody else yeah. If it was possible with a man like you and me, it is possible. I mean, if it was possible with somebody who was born in the same way we were born, it is also possible with us that we can walk with God, we can please Him. So, what it takes is a closer relationship, strong relationship. So, the, that's number one the word of God. I'm going to explain more about that one, but let's go to this one that I want to emphasize more. John chapter 14, from verse 15 to 17. And John chapter 16 from verse 5 to 15. Uh, sorry, John chapter 14 verse 15 to 17. And again, the same John chapter 16 verse 5 to 15. 16. Sorry, my, 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 my tongue is an African one. <laughs> Thank you. John 16. Yes, John 16, verses 5 to 15, and then John 14, verses 15 to 17. Praise be to God. So, uh, uh, somebody can lead, if whoever is there, we can lead. John 14, verse? No, no, uh, 40, yes, 14, verse 15 to 17. 14 and starting in verse 15. This is the Amplified. If you really love me, you will keep mm -hmm. and obey my commands. Mm -hmm. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, an advocate, a strengthener, and a standby, that he may remain with you forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive or welcome can take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Did you want 16 too? Yeah, I said 15 to 17. 15 to 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that was that. But that was that? Yeah. Okay, let's go to 16, verse, that's chapter 16, verses 5 to 15. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, 
Sorrow has filled your hearts. You've taken complete possession of them. Or it has. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, it is good, and it's advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the Comforter or the Counselor will not come to you into, and he will not come into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. And when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness or the uprightness of heart and a right standing with God and about judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me they, or to trust in and rely on me. About righteousness or the uprightness of heart and a right standing with God because I go to my Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler or that evil genius prince of this world, Satan himself, is judged and condemned, and sentence already is passed upon him. I have still many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. Verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth, that truth-giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole, full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come and that will happen in the future. He will honor and glorify me because he will take of and re receive or draw upon what is mine and will reveal or de declare and disclose to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said that he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal or disclose them to you. In a little while, you will no longer see me. And again, after a short while, you will see me. So some to, of his it's, disciples to, questioned... To, it's, it's to verse 15. So I'm so sorry. Thank you so I'm, much. Pardon me. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you so I'm much. It's a pretty good <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, I know it's a very good passage. Uh, it's a very good passage. You know, uh, this was the time that Jesus wa was talking. Even be it was before his uh, uh, about his crucifixion and crucifixion and his uh, descending to the Father. So there's this thing that he brought before the uh, uh, disciples. He said, "You know what? I'm leaving, and it is profitable." to you that I should leave. Because I, if I do not go, then this other part you will not have. He says, then the spirit of the spirit, which is one of the, I mean, one of the three, uh, the three of God in triunity, uh, uh, tri he says, if I do not go, this one does not come in your life. But it is profitable to you that I must go so that you should benefit from this comforter. So, what is happening here, Jesus, these disciples depended on the voice of God. Each time the morning came, they could gather around Jesus, and they were expecting, every morning, every day, they were expecting a word from Jesus. And they, that is what they were expecting. A word from Jesus to tell them it is ABC, it is ABCD. So they right. depended on the uh, hearing from Jesus through their ears to say what is it that he is going to tell us. And we know that whatever he tells, we have to obey. So they depended on that one. And then Jesus said, my time is over now. Let me leave the stage for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this, he said, now it is beneficial for you that I must leave. Because when I leave, another 
and somebody is going to come. That means they were supposed. They were, he says another one is going to come. When I'm saying, uh, when Pastor Love says it is beneficial for you to for me to go because if I do, uh, when I go, I'm going to leave this thing with this one. Now, which means I, as Pastor Christopher, I will, um, I will shift my eyes on Pastor Ray. Then I will focus my eyes on the one who has taken the position of Pastor Ray. And this is what Jesus was speaking to the disciples. He says, and he continued to say, I have got so many things to tell you, but now there is this thing, you cannot be it. Why could they not be it? Because they never had the Holy Spirit who is able to contain the presence of God in their lives. So it says, it's better that I go. This one, when I go, he will empower you to contain whatever is of the kingdom of God. He will empower you to understand the word of God. He will make you stand on the word of God. You have heard me speaking to you. I've taught you about the kingdom of my father, but you cannot do it now. So it's beneficial for me to go so that when he comes, he will enable you to stand in the kingdom of God. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, we got it. He says, if I go, I myself have taught you the kingdom of God. I've taught you, taught you in this. You have heard me preaching. You have seen me hearing. Um, um, uh, hearing. You have seen me prophesying. You have seen so many things that you never saw in your life. But now, I want you, I, I, when I'm leaving, another one is coming who will do these things through you. And you will do greater things than the things that you have seen. So it's beneficial that now I leave and I leave that stage. You know, I like the amplified version. It says, another comforter, another counselor. Another wisdom. Now, they depended on the wisdom of Christ Jesus every morning. They depended on the words of Jesus Christ every morning. Now, Jesus was turning to them, no, my time is over now. Depend on the one who is coming after me. So, working successfully with God, if you depend upon the Holy Spirit, you will successfully work with God. You know, so many people to say the time of the Holy Spirit is over. But now they, they, they say God, God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Now, how is it that he has given something yesterday and you are saying today it, it is not there? He does not change. He is still speaking. He is still working. He is still hearing. He is still speaking of your future. He is still speaking of your future. He says he will speak to you. When he, he was speaking to disciples, he says he will tell you of the future. Which future? He's not going to tell you about the end of the world. But he's going to tell you about your own future. Amen. He's going to tell you about your own future. Amen. About the, the end of the world. He has already told us to say it is with our father. The hour and the day is not known. But what I and you are supposed to be... To be led every moment. He has said about the end. Every moment. But the future is what is happening with you. He will tell you. He will, say, he will tell you today, you do not have to do this because tomorrow something is going to happen. That is your future. He will explain the details of your life. If somebody is hearing me, God has not stopped talking. God has not stopped working. He is still healing. He is still delivering people. The whole, it is the time of the Holy Spirit. You need to embrace, you need to prepare yourself so that you should be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you have the spirit of God The spirit of God will talk to you You will hear the voice of the spirit of God If somebody hears the spirit of God You too can hear the spirit of God Amen. You can hear the spirit of God So the Bible says Jesus was speaking It is beneficial for you that I go For when I still remain with you You will not enjoy the kingdom of God and he says, if I do not go, the work of God will not go further. Because the work of God depended where Jesus could be at that particular time. If he is here, you call him Kabari. So people in Kabari were the only people who could hear the voice of God. 
If he shift, he goes with, whether you call it Winnipeg. The people in Winnipeg, they were the only people who could hear the voice of God. But now said, now it is the time that I should be, we should be everywhere. So it is beneficial that I go. So if somebody is hearing me, it is the time of the Holy Spirit. If you want to walk with God, embrace the Holy Spirit. You know, when he says in John chapter, is it John chapter 14, he says, this, the world does not know the Holy Spirit because it does not seek him, which means we need to seek the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We need to seek the Holy Spirit. We need, even if the Spirit, you know, when I was, we, even if there was, we say, the time when we received Christ Jesus, the Spirit of God came upon us. Yes, the Spirit of God came upon us. But if we continue seeking His presence, we will be totally immersed in His presence. Amen. And when we are immersed in His presence, it will not be so difficult to hear His voice. Amen. It will not be difficult to hear his voice. God will tell you every detail of your life. If, let me give you an example. If some, something is going to happen to me, I mean to happen to me tomorrow, God speaks to me during the night. And when I woke up, I prepare myself to say, God, I said this, and this is what is going to happen. Because the Holy Spirit constantly speaks of what is happening tomorrow, what is happening about the ministry, what is happening about your future. He is constantly speaking. Yeah. The problem is we have opened we we have opened our ears to what the world is speaking, and so we have been conformed to the vocabulary of the world, and we walk according the world as the world walks. Oh. We are not. We will not walk successfully with God when the, when we hear the voice of God. I mean, when we hear the voice of the world and we value the voice of the world. When the world is going to the wrong end, we will go together with the world in the wrong end. Amen. But when we hear the voice of God, when the world is going this direction, we go the opposite direction because we are led by the Spirit of God. So the number one, num number two thing, if we build that close relationship, let the Holy Spirit be evident in your life. Right. You know, Paul was speaking in, in uh, Paul was speaking in, in, in Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter 5 verse 18. He says, you people never be drunk with this wine and other things, but be filled. When he says filled, what does that mean filled? Feeling something that is feeling up to the uh, 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 brim, to the, to the top of it. That means I've filled water in this bottle. So Paul says, be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Why was he saying that be filled? It, when, when, you know, uh, so I wanted to carry bottles of water. When you have got a bottle of water half filled and the other one is fully filled, the two of them, they have got water. But the quantity is different. But they all have what? Water. But the quantity is what? So Paul was emphasizing, telling the, the Ephesians, he says, see to it that you are filled to the brim. Filled to the brim, such that you are, you have no space to hear what the world is saying, but you only have the space of hearing what God is saying. And when you have the space of what God is saying, because of the Spirit that is in you, the Spirit will embrace that voice of God, and you will walk according to the voice of God. This is the reason. Says Jesus, talked to the disciples. Says, if I do not go, these people will remain babies. But they are supposed to be filled with the Spirit of God. He says, the Comforter will come. He says, he will guide you. That is number one. He says, he will guide you. Hallelujah. He says, he will guide you. I choose to be guided by God and not by the world. I choose to be guided by God and not by anybody else, but to be guided by, by the voice of God. I choose to be guided by the word of God and not by anything else. You know, when you are filled by the Spirit of God, you know what happens? This is what uh, uh, Pastor Ray was saying. You, are, you obey fully. You have got no problem to obey the voice of God because in you there is that fullness of the Spirit of God. So you do not struggle in obeying the voice of God. You do not struggle to follow the voice of God. So it is the time of the Holy Spirit. Whether somebody says it is, it, it, he says the whole, it is not the time of the, my friend, let me explain this kind of a thing. You know, 
I was privileged to to grow up in an area. My, my, I grew up, I mean, when I was at the age of from 17, I lived with my, my brother in a factory where they process sugar. So I started to, to, to see that I can have a sugar, but if I do not have a machine to process sugar, I mean, I can have a, a cane, sorry, a sugar cane, but if I do not have a machine to process that sugar cane into sugar, I will simply remain with that sugar cane, but I will not have sugar. Mm, right. Now, I can have the machine to process a, a sugar cane into sugar, but if I do not have a field with sugar canes, I will simply remain with my what? Mm. My machine. The two have to work together. Mm. The word of God and the spirit of God has to work together. The word of God is a raw material upon which the Holy Spirit works for the manifestation of the kingdom of God. If there is no word of God in me, there is nothing that the Holy Spirit is going to work on. If I have the Holy Spirit and no word of God in me, there is nothing that the Holy Spirit is going to work on. So I have to balance I have to be full of the word of God. And I have to be full of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says to the disciples, the Holy Spirit will remind you what I've spoken to you. He will bring into remembrance the words that I've spoken to you. The Holy Spirit will not speak a different thing. He will simply bring to say, he will just guide you to just open Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6. Just open 2 Corinthians chapter 2. The Holy Spirit is guiding me, reminding me what what is written. Amen. So if I do not have the Holy Spirit, I can be filled with the word of God. This word of God becomes effective when it is powered by the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I give another example? Understand my brother is a police officer. The country make, makes laws. Yeah. If there is nobody on the ground to enforce the laws, right. the laws will not work. There must be somebody on the ground to uh, see to it that everybody is abiding. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says it will convict the, the you of a sin. The Holy Spirit. He, he says it is not me, Jesus, who will be working in your heart. He says it is the Holy Spirit. So this is the time of the Holy Spirit. I embrace the Holy Spirit. Amen. I enjoy. This is the reason when I say, I mean, David says in Psalms, I, I enjoy when somebody, he says, I like to be in the house of God and gaze the glory of God. Because the glory of God will always bring it in your heart. You say, you have not done it right. Who always bring it in your heart. You say, you need to do this. It is the work of the Holy Spirit and not the work of Jesus. He says, my father has given me everything. So the Holy Spirit will take what my father has given me unto you. But my, he will not speak to you of his own things. And he, Jesus, you know, it is that in order. Understand, it is that in order. When Jesus was ministering, he says, I do not do things on my own. I see my father doing it. And when he ascended, he also told them that the one who is coming is not going to do the things of his own. He's going to do the things of what my father has given me. So I will release them to him. So he will bring them to you. God works in that order. The order today is the order of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, even if you do not have the word of God, he will speak to you. Sometimes when you have made wrong, when I, I, I see myself sometimes when I've made a mistake, you, you show me, I'll see myself in a vision, putting a jacket, but a jacket is, is, is torn on my back. I say, God is saying something's wrong with me. When I say something's wrong with me, then I, I begin to search my life. I say, it is somewhere there. The spirit of God has rebuked me. It is not the word of God. But it is the Spirit of God that has rebuked me. So this is the, this is the 
time of the Holy Spirit, if you need to walk with, if you need to walk successfully in the kingdom of God, may the Holy Spirit find place in your life. May you seek the Holy Spirit. May you give room to Holy Spirit. Do not be so educated to say you the Holy Spirit is not working now. My friend, you I have missed it. You know, some this is the reason, you know, when we go to when we go to Bible school, we find a professor teaching. He say, I'm going to teach you the book of John. But when you study his life, he, he teaches you very well. And you, when he's teaching, you see the revelation of God coming. But when you study his life, you find that his life is not in line with his teaching. The problem is he has no spirit. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He has no spirit. So this is the time of the Holy Spirit. This is the time of the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit, number one, was as I want to the work of the Holy Spirit, when, when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, he says, He will help you to continue with what I'm with I was doing with you. Amen. And this is the reason, you know, when we go to Acts chapter Acts chapter, sorry, I'll be honest speaking for the sake of time. You can re- write Acts chapter thirteen, verse twenty two. I mean verse two. Thirteen, sorry, I speak an African tongue. Thirteen <laughs> verse two. Praise be to God. Acts 13 verse 2. The Bible says, When the believers sat and they were busy worshiping God, praying and fasting, the Spirit of God descended to them to say, Separate me, Paul and Barnabas. You know, separate me. They, it was, they never went into the scriptures where they found it. And he, he, Jesus says, one time you'll be saying, Paul and Barnabas will be separate. No, they, when they were praying, they were open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And when they were open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God descended and said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. And they separated them. You know, it is the spirit that knows what to do. Yes. Not you who knows what to do, not me. It is the spirit of God who knows what to do and who to carry that work. So when the Holy Spirit saw it fitting that Paul and Barnabas were suitable for that particular work and he said, separate me and listen to me, they were not sitting, they were not praying, I mean playing, but they were praying and worshiping. And when the, it is the worship that ushers you into the presence of God. Yeah. It is a prayer and a fasting that kills your um, natural ears and opens spiritual ears and you begin to hear from God. And the Spirit of God descended and they were separated. So they were successful in the ministry because they were open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. They walked successfully. And when we go again to Acts chapter 27 verse 23. Acts 27 verse 23. It is a story that Paul was supposed to appear before Caesar. He was in chains. And now, when they were about to, I mean, when they were about to sail, because they were, uh, they, 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 they were going to uh, sail on the lake, whether it was a sea, they were going to, to, to pass through the sea. And before they did that, the angel of God appeared to Paul. And he spoke to him to say, this journey is going to be very tedious. The ship is going to be broken. But see, nobody is going to lose his life. They are under your protection. The fact that you are in this boat, everybody is protected. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Paul spoke to the captain of the ship. And when you know, when you are a prisoner, <laughs> you are speaking to somebody, I don't think your voice can be held. And the voice of Paul was never held because they were looking at him as a lawbreaker. They never saw him as a man filled with the Spirit of God. So the captain simply looked at him. He is afraid of appearing before Caesar, this one. So they continued with the journey. They went on the journey. And when they were on the middle of the sea, what Paul saw, what the angel spoke to Paul during the night started happening. And everybody was shivering, crying, doing this and that. Then Paul stood. He said, if only you held what I told you, 
The problem you did not listen. But hey, listen to me. Nobody's going to lose his life here. But whatever you have here, we're going to lose, including the sheep. Amen. So I'm, I'm saying, Paul was told by the Spirit of God that this journey is going to be difficult. So before he went on to the journey, he knew what that journey is, is going to be. He knew that I'm going to face problem. So he was at peace because you know what? The end of the journey, he knew it. Something is going to happen, but nobody is going to die. We will all land safely. So he was not afraid. You know, when you are, are you, when you are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God tells you, you are going, these things are going to happen, but this is the way that is going to end. And when you have seen the end, you, do not sh- you are not shaken because you have seen the end. Amen. That happened to someone, that happens to a person who is open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is still speaking today. The Spirit of God is not lying idle. It is idle because you do not seek him. Paul says, the world does not know it. Because the world does not seek. I mean, the world does not know the Holy Spirit. It is not it is a person. The world does not know the Holy Spirit. Because, he says, he gives you the reason. Because he does not seek the Holy Spirit. But you and me, we are supposed to seek the Spirit of God. He will guide us in our families. He will guide us in our businesses. He will guide us in raising our children. He will guide us in our spiritual life. He will guide us in our ministry. The ministry is not ours. It is the ministry of God. So we need to be open to the leading of the Spirit of God. He has simply brought in in his plans. So we need to listen from him. Praise be to God. So we are very much advantaged that God has given us his word and God has given us his spirit. We are different from the people of the Old Testament, the people of Enoch. They could only wait. When is it that God is going to visit me? They could only wait like that. The disciples, when they sleep, they were saying, when the day breaks, we are going to hear what the Son of God is going to tell us. What is it? They were only, but now time came when it shifted. He says, now it is the time of the Holy Spirit. It is the time of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Walking closely with God, in walking in, in pleasing God, it is when we are led by the Spirit of God. Paul labored much in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter... He labored much the life of the Spirit. And he says, if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, then you are the children of God. If you are led by the Spirit of God, then you are the children of God. Paul labored much, much on, this, on the life of the Spirit. It is the life of the spirit today be led by the spirit of God build that relationship with the spirit of God Jesus has left the position has left the place and now the spirit is working it is him the spirit that is convincing us I mean that is working in our hearts may we give that room to the working of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah thank you so much this is what I had walking with God. Amen. Build closer relationship. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Minus the word of God. Minus the word of God. You do not have a raw material upon which the Holy Spirit can work. Amen. We enforce the word of God, the promises of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by our power. When the word of God is in us, we enforce the promises of God with the power of the Holy Spirit, not with our power. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, see, the manner Jesus Christ was anointed with Holy Ghost and power. So he depended upon the power of the Spirit to wake whatever God assigned him to wake on earth. May God bless you so much. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. Amen. Right there. Amen. <laughs> You've got some processing to do. Amen. There's a whole bunch. You should keep going, honey. Keep going. Keep going. Praise be uh, to God. Well, you know, Amen. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. About life application studies. Okay? Amen. Just go just go by the globe here. Put your hands. No? Okay. Just go by it? No, okay. on the side? Okay. You, you, is he in there? Okay, all right, let, let's give effort. Okay, Leslie, no, no, you just stay. Uh, 
North America needs you. Very good. Oh. You, you Africa. You go on these sides. That's too far for you to stretch. I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. I am. <clears throat> Cheryl, if you'd like to come up, there's a spot on the globe here that needs hands on it too, if you'd like to put your hands on it. The this is the, the process of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to, uh, we're going to pray over... There's approximately 200 and some odd nations in the world. There's about 190 right now <laughs> that are nations. There are 60 nations in conflict that no longer, they're no longer a nation. They are in chaos. And, and there is, a, if you'd like to come up, uh, Bruce, uh, you can just slip <laughs> in between and we're going to put it on. We're, okay, right there. Oh, 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 good one. Okay. So, uh, okay. Ralph, when you feel good, you slip up too. You, if you got everybody in there, there's room, right? I'll stay here. Okay. okay. You that are out there, you stretch your hands because we're praying the refinement of the Holy Spirit to every nation. Right now, there, as I say, there's over 60 content tensions. There are over 60 nations that are in war, 60 nations that are transforming to something else because of coups. There's... Uh, there's approximately 180 to 190 nations that are, are uh, settled in the UN, approximately, but decreasing. There's more going into chaos. We at Resurrection Life, we have, we have, uh, we have in the last 30 some odd years, the Lord has taken into us into over 90 nations that we know of. There's some that we don't know of because they're going underground. So we thank the Lord. We're just one ministry listening to God. If you li listen, think of all the other ministries around the world that are listening to God. It says that every nation shall hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think the Lord is a, a, a God of second chances. Mm -hmm. Some of them are getting it second time, third time, fourth time. Because the Father is waiting for his bride to come into order. And it says all the nations shall be what? Judged. By the policeman, mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit, yes. by the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. by the raw word of God. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're not submitting. They'd sooner be in chaos and listening and fighting over whatever they think the wealth is of that nation. Mm -hmm. and, and genociding whatever nation. And making slaves out of people mm -hmm. to make money out of whatever. The, God says, no, stop it. Mm -hmm. These, this is my creation, not man's. Yeah. All these nations weren't there. I have created every nation and every flag of every nation through the Holy Spirit, their flags, their colors, those nations are mine, says the Lord. I have been, says the Lord thy God, I was the first paratrooper from heaven, special forces, mm -hmm. put the feet on the ground to establish a beachhead in Israel. <clears throat> Because the Father says, I'm sending my son first to the lost sheep of Israel. And then, it, then, <clears throat> then, he says, after that, how many of his disciples were sent to the Goyims? After Israel had been spoken to all tribe, 12 tribes. And Paul was called to that. And he wasn't listening to God. He was listening to man and tradition. When he listened to God, when he got knocked on his butt on his way to... Damascus, and became spiritually awakened because he became naturally blind. You need to become spiritually awakened to what the Holy Spirit is refining in you, whatever nation you're in. And if you're in captivity, the Lord says, I am going to protect you as a rock, just as you've heard here by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to provide for you even during the difficult times. You are my remnant that I have created a Petra or a rock of protection. So let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. You go for it. That you, you Just as the Holy Spirit is led. To touch everyone, Lord. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We have placed our hands, Lord. For we know, we have been taught, that this world, Lord, that you have given us mm -hmm. is round like this. 
We have placed our hands, Father, in different nations, Lord. And you have appointed your people, Father, in yes. these different nations, That's Father. Right. Lord, empower them with your spirit, Lord. Yeah. Give them the spirit of boldness. Let them stand up, Father, and declare your kingdom, O Lord. Father, those people, Lord, that they are benefiting, Father, from their evil ways, mm -hmm. that Lord, they are making nations, Father, fight against nations, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to mention the names, Father. Netanyahu, President of Israel. Putin, President of Russia. Mm -hmm. Father, the President of Iran. The, the, the leaders of, of Syria, the leaders, Father Lord, of these other nations, O oh Lord, I pray, Father, mm. that they should look, Father Lord, upon these people, mm -hmm. Father, through your eyes, that yeah. every person, Father, was created by you, Lord. Yeah. They do not deserve to die, Father, like animals. Father, right. in the name of Jesus, may your mercy and your grace, our yeah, Father, yeah, yeah, be yeah, upon yeah. them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we place our hands, Father, and your word said, Father, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. Father, we raise our voice, yes, Father, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Father, rise up for your people in, in Israel, O oh Lord. Fight for them, Father, Lord. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every work of the evil one there, Lord, we rebuke it, we bring it under the feet of Christ Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare victory, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Father, Father, oh Lord, our hands are upon this. We declare salvation. Mm -hmm. Let your gospel, Father, reach every nation, let reach every living soul, Father, oh, in yeah. the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. May they hear your word, yes. the word of salvation. Yeah. May they receive Jesus Christ, yeah, Lord, as Jesus. their Savior in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, oh, oh Lord. Yeah. May they seek the Holy Spirit, oh Lord. Let yeah. every leader, let every preacher, Father, seek the yeah. power yeah. of the Holy Spirit yes, in the name of Jesus. Let whatever the preach comes from you, O oh Lord, in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we honor yes, you, Lord, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Ramaza kuria baba zeke rikanza ka rakanze kuria baba nza kuria mama nza ramanze kuria mama nza kuria mama. Arise, Abba Father, arise, Yahweh, arise, Jehovah Jireh. Let people be saved, Lord. Protect them, Father, from the evil ways, Father, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, O oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of yes, Father. God. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah yes. is, O oh Lord, yes. as it is said in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Lord, that you call upon my name, save yes, me, Lord. Lord. Father, we are calling yes. upon your name, Lord. Yes. Save this world, O oh Lord, yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Save your people, yes, Abba, Lord. Father, from the powers of darkness, yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we honor you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Anybody? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, Lord, Jesus. for the power of your blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the whole world, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we just stand in agreement for the for all people, Lord, all across the nations, Lord. For for them, Lord, that they would know you, Lord. That they would know you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come and brood over them, Lord. That they would no longer be lost, but they would be found, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, Lord. The power of your presence, Lord, is here and now across the world, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your power to raise the dead, Lord. For those that are dead, Lord, because they don't don't know you Lord they are separated from you we thank you for the power of your blood that made that separation come into alignment Lord with you Lord that they could have uh, union with the Father so we thank you Lord for what you have done Lord we thank you Lord for your move of your spirit is moving and brooding across this nation across this land across this world Lord Father, that no nation, there would, won't be a nation that will be lost, Lord, for your kingdom, Lord, that they will see you, Lord, the mighty one, the holy one. They will know you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you that your word is the same yesterday, today, yes, and tomorrow, Lord. forever and ever, God. Lord, thank you that you are the same, Lord God. Yeah. And I thank you, Lord, by your power and your spirit and your might, mm. Lord, that the world will be saved. Mm. The ones that are in the world, yes, not Lord. of the world, yeah. Lord. Yes, Lord. In the world, but not of the world, will be yes, saved, God. I thank mm. you, Lord, for hearts turning to you, Lord, even today, Father God. I thank you for eyes, Lord, mm. focusing on you, who are the author, perfecter, finisher yeah. of our faith, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for a mighty move of God. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I thank you, God. You are calling, you are calling to repent, Lord. You are calling that that the people, Lord, from nation to nation, mm -hmm. Lord, to repent, Lord. Mm -hmm. And God, I thank you, Lord. Uh, even as Adam and Eve missed it, God, in, in the garden, Lord, they allowed pride to come, Lord, into their hearts. They allowed pride to take root in their lives, God. Lord, they need to repent, God. And, and Lord, you still would have turned things around if they had repented. That's your word, Lord, God. But they chose, Lord, to go on their own, Lord, and that was pride. So, God, I thank you for a spirit of repentance falling upon all people, Lord, of all nations, Lord, of all colors, God. Lord, you created us all in your image, Lord, God. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that may that spirit of repentance fall yes, Lord. may pride be put under and yes, under our feet lord but we have to do that lord as followers of christ we have to do that we need to set the example of that lord so i thank you lord in your ecclesia lord across the world god that the leaders lord and the followers that know you lord are putting pride under their feet lord that they're humbling themselves before the living god and lord i thank you that your spirit is helping them to do that lord i thank you that it is through your spirit lord that we can see where we've made mistakes Lord God, that we can take those mistakes, Lord, and we can lay them at the cross, Lord, that we can that we can embrace the cross and what you did, Lord, and your blood, Lord, that cleanses us from all acts of unrighteousness, Lord, to lift us up into that right standing with you, Father God. Lord, that all nations, Lord, and all people will, will look to you, God, and, and, Lord, be restored, Lord, unto you, God. But, Lord, it starts with us humbling ourselves before you, Lord. We are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. It's with you and your Holy Spirit in us that we can do all things, Lord. So, uh, thank you, Lord. You are calling us to be victorious. You're calling us conquerors, Lord, through your word, through your Holy Spirit. So, God, I thank you, Lord. We call people, the sons and daughters of God, to rise up, rise up, rise up. God, and take their place, Lord, with Father God, with Holy Spirit, with Lord Yeshua. Uh, they are seated in heavenly places. We are seated with you, Lord. Let us elevate our eyes, Lord. Let us elevate our hearts, our spirits, our minds, Lord. Let us set our minds on heavenly things, not on worldly things, but on you, Lord, and heavenly things. And Lord, as Romans 12, 2 says, Lord, do not conform any longer to the power of this world, but be, but be transformed by renewing your mind that you may test and approve what God's will is, as good and perfect pleasing Jesus. word for your life a pleasing will for your life yes. and that's for each and every one of us god thank you lord thank you lord and your will for us is to be one with you lord mm -hmm. one with you lord yes. not war yes lord. but love yes. one with you lord yes. that place of love yes. praise you lord yes. thank you lord psalm 122 8 thank you lord for the peace mm -hmm. I think it was about two weeks ago or three weeks ago that I, I preached on Matthew 24 based on the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, verses, what's that? Oh, verses five, um, five, to five, six, and seven. It says, Take heed that no one deceives you, in verse four. Mm -hmm. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, mm -hmm. and many will be deceived. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars as we've been praying here. But also, after that, it talks about, see that you are not troubled. See that you are not troubled by all this. As, as uh, Christopher was preaching, we are not troubled because we're covered. We've got the Holy Spirit that's comforting us. We are covered and we're not troubled. <sighs> you know, it's, it says Enoch was taken because he had not. There was no sin and he was not troubled. It says, it says in the scriptures, uh, when you go deeper into it, uh, when he was born, it was 65 years, and then he started walking God after 65 years. So maybe you've you got to get rid of the diapers and get closer so you can walk with God. He walked with three, for 300 and didn't need a cane because he came to the place of maturity. That's what we've been talking about, how God is bringing his ecclesia to a place of maturity. You cannot be a child and be in the ecclesia then go to war. 
spiritually, physically, or naturally. He has prepared his remnant, us, to stand in the gates of every city, of every nation, of every hamlet, of every side. When I say side, uh, side of a hill, if there's a hamlet there. This is the time that God has put us in a place of great authority. Because then it says here, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. Just as Jesus said, I must leave in order for you to prosper in the Holy Spirit, in comfort. See, and it says, these things must come to pass, and the end is not yet. And then it says, nation shall rise against nation. Small k, kingdom shall rise against other kingdoms. Right now, there's over 85 nations that have publicly said, they're standing with Israel. 85. That was a week and a bit ago. I haven't followed it since. That's amazing. Even some of them are, are of the Arab nation because they know that Hamas, Hamas is evil. It's not a nation. It's an evil thing. There's evil stuff up there saying uh, they're a kingdom of evil. And that kingdom of evil is going to come against and take up other kingdoms of evil and have them bow down to them so they can be stronger. They're getting bigger and bigger and stronger. It's only the kingdom of God, small k, that's going to push these guys back. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power in the blood, and the refinement of the word. So kingdom against kingdom, wars, wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there, sh there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes and ver uh, at various places. These are the beginning of sorrows for man. But celebration in the kingdom, small kingdom of heaven. Because the time and season is coming because it's a time of sorrows for man. But the time of celebration that I am preparing my bride without spot or wrinkle. I don't know about you, when we were soaking in that uh, beautiful mineral bath, getting rid of all the spots and wrinkles on us, we were in no place of sorrow. We were in a place of celebration saying, this is a good place to be to get rid of all the spots and wrinkles. It feels good. Except for water wrinkles. Well, water wrinkles, well, they disappear. Thank you. <laughs> so your homework, okay, your homework people uh, is Matthew... I had this on my heart, but you, you, you need to repeat, read Matthew chapter 3. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's John the Baptist saying, repent for the kingdom. He came out of the wilderness in Judea. That's the same wilderness Jesus went into. That's the same wilderness that Isaiah came out of. It's the same wilderness that, you know, it says repent for the kingdom is, is at hand. And it says, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way. That's Isaiah 40, verse 3. A voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way. That's the voice of God speaking in the wilderness. The children of God that were in the wilderness, that would sooner complain to God and be angry at God. And he says, you want to be angry? Take an extra 40 years and walk and be bumps in the sand, and be a loser's limp. I'm only going to take those who are going to be fit in the Holy Spirit to go into what has to happen to take the promised land against the giants. Those who have no fear. You can read that. Verse 11 says, Indeed, I baptize you with water. Unto repentance. But he... The King of kings, the Lord of lords, who is coming after me, is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire! Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they danced in the fire and were not burnt. The enemy, only the guards were taken out outside. outside. Jesus is going to dance with you in the fire. They were in the fire pot because they would not bow down to the gods at that time. 
Do not bow down regardless of what you go into. God will keep you prepared. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, well, you're getting a super ticket to home. Or you'll be dancing in the fire. God has a plan. And it says in verse 12, His winnowing fan. Well, you could say His winnowing sword. His winning, uh, He's going to be separating the, uh, the wheat from the chaff, the goats from the sheep, whatever you want. His, it's happening now. He is separating those who have defilement and would sooner have a spirit of air in their being than be hungry and walk in the spirit of truth, as it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. It says that spirit of air is always pursuing the spirit of truth. So that's what it is. Don't worry about it. We're the light. Darkness wants to come. You just have to turn around. Darkness has to leave. Be in authority, Ecclesia. <clears throat> children say, Jesus says, let the, let, let the children come unto me. Do you think that they were, he was talking about those who were like four and six and eight? They were all children at that time because they did not understand who he was. He said, let all the children come unto me. If you're heavy laden and, and you're burdened, if you're a child of God, you need to be matured and come unto me and be strengthened in the blood, in the refined word of the Father, in the authority, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, Yeshua HaMashiach is saying, come unto me, my beloved bride. Be prepared. Be that the voice in the wilderness is speaking to us. Children, come unto me and be my ecclesia. They couldn't be the ecclesia when Jesus was saying that because they didn't have any common sense of what the, everything that God was doing because of the religious spirit. Jesus was setting up a beachhead for the ecclesia for us to mature in a time zone of Petra for today. And when Paul was speaking about the poor in Jerusalem... He was not speaking to those who did not have any food. He was speaking to himself because he says, I was poor, but now I am wealthy. I did not know the way. I was poor because I did not know Jesus. In Acts 28, the last thing he says, we've got to go and feed the poor in Jerusalem because they don't know the way. It also says the hungry will always be with us. Those who need our help in, in whatever it is, the skirt, they'll always be with us. But those who are poor that don't know Yeshua HaMashiach need to come into the light. So his last direction in Acts 28, which goes today, Acts 29, is that we need to speak to the poor, whatever nation of the poor that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Messiah. And then they shall be rich of the inheritance. As it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says that we are seated in heavenly places. We are seated with Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. It says that we have what? All our inheritance, we are rich with all the richness of heaven sitting in the throne with Yeshua HaMashiach on the right hand of God the Father. And he says, I am the advocate. So you're sitting with the advocate. You're sitting with the advocate, with the Holy Spirit. We are not poor. We are rich in who we are in the Holy Spirit. Those who do not know the Holy Spirit, you are poor. That's verse 12 in chapter 3 of Matthew. Then you will read in 13, Jesus, John gets Jesus and baptizes him. The heavens are one, the glory of God, my son in whom I'm well pleased. Chapter 4, okay. It says here in chapter 4, Satan tempts Jesus. Satan tempts Jesus. We will be tempted. Jesus was tempted. He went into the same wilderness that John the Baptist came out of. And the, and G, and the devil gave everything to try to tempt Jesus. 
And Jesus said it's written in the word of God. Are you ready to say to the devil, it is written by the voice of God from the beginning of time. His voice is in me because I have the DNA of the Father. I have the voice of the Holy Spirit within me, which is the voice of God. And I have the blood of Jesus and I am sanctified and I am ready now. And then you read, you know, I love it. In verse 12, Jesus begins his ministry in Galilee. I can't wait for us to go to Israel. I've been there. I've been to this exact place this, where, Je- where Jesus begins his ministry. And it wasn't confrontational. It was heaven walking on earth. And one of the first miracles is Peter's mother-in-law gets healed. It's beautiful. But it says here, I'm leaving, and it says in verse, uh, in verse 17, there's a prophetic word that had to be done based on 15 and 16 and was fulfilled. Now that, now that time, from that time, now that time, from that time, because it was said, G- Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So this time, from beginning time to ending time to this present time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we are protected. So bless you. As I said, this, is a, this month of November 5th to December 5th is going to be the month of peace, month of missions, month of benevolence. If you have extra and you want to put it into benevolence, send it to us or with a direction and we'll do it. The same with ministry right now. We have so many things happening around the world. You know, they're, see, they're watching what we're doing, Bruce, Cheryl. Those guys in Bangladesh, they watch what we did in regards to a leaders conference. They put on a leaders conference for the last four days. We, were, we, uh, we spoke through... Uh, uh, <laughs> on you know like Facebook Leslie spoke through Facebook 12 hours difference and we and Leslie with prophetic words and words of wisdom and power and whatever you could see the anointing come down and people being healed and it doesn't matter where you it's the same right now do <laughs> Jesus says do as I do walk as I walk speak as I speak as the father I see my father doing do it now on this earth. I love those guys in resurrection like <laughs> Bangladesh. They're doing it. They said, I don't know how to do it, but we're going to do it. <laughs> you know what they did? <laughs> it, the university campus and put it on there. Changing an area. It's happening in India. It's happening in Africa. It's happening in different places. George and Fiji. I just got to the end with this, George and Khaleesi. Fiji is, is the line, the date line. So at one minute after 12, they are blowing the shofar and praying at one minute after 12 because the Muslim nations at 10 minutes after 12 turn their speakers on and do their thing. So uh, tell, tell George says, Ah, Pastor Ray, ask Pastor Ray. We get... One minute after twelve, we start before they, before they get going, and we and we take authority over that, and they are in the international dateline. We need to know that the international dateline we take authority over the wave or the sounds of what the enemy wants to put in the air, and we will speak God's voice into the air wherever we are in whatever nation. So bless you in that. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and merciful. The Lord lift his countenance upon you every morning. And give you a kiss, relationship. And the Lord give thee peace. Where there is peace, there is no chaos. And the Lord, his name, Jehovah, his voice, Jehovah, 
I am that I am that I am. Jehovah Shema, I am that I am that I am. I never change. I am the same. I am the am that I am in you now and always will be. I'm Jehovah Shem. I am that burning bush inside you now with the Holy Spirit. As it says in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 7, 8, and 9, <laughs> Isaiah says, Here I am, Lord. Put the hot coal to my lips. Get me pure it up. Here I am, Lord. Send me to the nations. Send me to the neighbor. Send me to the lost. Send me to the poor. Send me to the children that need to come into a place of knowing you. As Yeshua HaMashiach, through the Ruach HaKadosh, through Adonai Elohim, in all the names of God and His the character, flow, flow through you in love. And love be the greatest of all those things, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. <clears throat> Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So let's go out and love somebody. Even though they don't want to be loved. Love on them. See you next week.